Yeah, that's the basic structure that we're going to use to place our roof and create the roof structure or the roof construction for 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 that. So let's start by activating the roof tool to place the roof to the structure. So I'll activate the roof tool from your design tool palette, or I can just click on the on the favorites and then, then click, that will click on that. And then we have geometry method section and construction method. So these are the um, tools that enables us to define the roof type or the roof design we want to do under geometry method we have the single plane or you can create a multi-plane roof so i'm going to activate the multi-plane under the geometry from the construction method we have uh, the complex roof and the rectangular heap or gable and rotated rectangular heap and gable um, tools in this case we're going to use the complex roof because it will give us the platform to define the footprint of the building so by just clicking on the corners so either way you can do it on a 3d window or in the floor plan um, view so this in this case i'm gonna use a 3d window so I just click on this corner and then do this one just like that just like that by defining these points or corners and then click on this one go back where you started to finish it off like that perfect oh by the way this is a funny material to to start with but uh, we can select it and then under structure let's set this to timber um, i think i can scroll down on the folder and then timber roof like that let's go back to the settings there the dialog settings and then under model i'm going to override the top surface to anything like uh, any roof finish like um, I'll go with the slates then hit OK I think we need to set the by scrolling the wheel in your info box you can go back or go forth depending on where you want just to scroll let's under the roof pivot height and pitch set this to 18 right there and then I'm going to change the thickness to 200 just to have something like that let's see let's see the edges i think the edges are perfect so yeah that's what we have for the roof um, geometry and we need to create a, uh, a graphic style that will enables us to navigate through the file or through the 3d elements of this project so it's very important because um, we're dealing with uh, too many components because we're creating a detailed roof construction or roof structure where it involves things uh, components like the hip or hip um, hip or valley trusses we have the struts we have the beams cords we have all different um, sorts of uh, components there so we need a graphic overlay that will enable us to navigate through the model and place these elements without and carry out the tasks that we need to do efficiently without um, being distracted with a lot of elements so i'm going to use a graphic overhead combinations to address that so go down here below and then click on the graphic override tab in this we have different types of graphic override styles we created for the ms beam 2023 um, template so as you can see there are a bunch of it if you scroll down here suppose it must be something that resonates with what i want to create now which is uh maybe plan b let's select plan b and then if i hit ok you see what happens so all the elements are grayed out imagine they are grayed out like this and then you are placing your elements and you can even clearly see where these elements um, are being assembled so let's create a graphic override specifically for the roof or for this exercise we are trying to do so go back to the graphic override combinations and then i'm gonna hit on new this is going to be a roof a roof um, construction like that and then hit ok there we go we need now to apply or create our rules so currently it's empty so we can only add a, a rule by clicking on this part side and then these are existing rules created before and for different uh, 
types or different visual styles so yeah we need also to create our rules to define this style we want to create we want to achieve for roof construction so let's go to manage rules and then to the new rule we're going to create first let's just hit on new down below and then call it roof you know say see through let's say roof see through and then hit okay oh there's already a name in that um context so what i'll do let's search for it let's say roof where are you okay here this is the roof see through there's a criteria that i set you can add here a criteria in this case i was using an element type as you can see it says element type and then this is the, the definition on how you want to affect those elements or these elements in this case i'm just going to affect all the 3d types so but i need to set an exclusion here for the things that i'm going to create that i'm going to work with i want them not to be affected things like the roof structure so i set another um criteria that is based on the classification so you can hit on here on add you can access the classification in this case there are two classification systems here um, by the architect default and then the uniform that ms beam template uses so he, what we did we said it's not because we don't want to affect the the ruling that we're going to create here this element only so we chosen or we chose the the transfer systems that we don't want to affect which is a roof structure frame so whatever we're going to create is going to be under this classification then we know it's gonna it's not going to be affected by the ruling so yeah and then if you come now to the override ruling styles we are saying all the elements are going to be grayed out and then the surface for all these elements is going to be a see-through we've created a, a surface that is almost transparent so we call it see-through so we're saying we're overriding the surface for all these 3d types elements within the my within the model or file except the elements that are on this classification i hope this makes sense guys and then if you say hit ok we're going to come here by add existing rule and then we go for we can search for the roof see through and then add there we go and then if we hit okay this is what it gives for us um in terms of um, so we can now go forward and place the roof structures components roof structure components here and being not affected by the, the structure okay so that's the next uh, that's the next step so to create a roof detailed construction uh, structure or whatever you can call it a roof structure or a detailed roof structure you need there are different ways or various ways to to apply or to approach this so before i can um uh, demonstrate that let's go to design and under roof extras we go there to roof maker we cannot access this they are grayed out because we are in 3d window so we cannot access this uh, on a 3d window so i need to go back to the floor plane window and then what i need to do like i said go back and then roof extras roof maker i can go down below here and show roof maker toolbox this is a toolbox for roof components as you can see with the first in the list is to create a rafter we can create a multiple rafters we can create a heap or a valley rafter or we can trim these elements or these rafters we can create a pair line we can create eaves uh, collar beams or tie beams depending these are two different uh, beams we have as well or you just do the um, automatic roof placing using the roof wizard so obviously this will be an easier way of going around by selecting um, this and then either you can select it and then you say roof wizard it gives you this um, roof wizard settings where you can define the dimensions of your your lumber in this case i'm going to say or well, timber the thickness of this is going to be 50 millimeters and then the spacing between the rafters is 900 and then you have an options to add an extra rafter to big gaps 
and then you can also have different types of joining we have join on a slant edges or we can stagger on the slant edges as well we can add an, uh, an extra rafter to the corners as well so yeah all these things are important to i can i recommend you to try all these different and then you can um, see what the results is giving you so it's important and then we have a minimal distance between rafters a minimal distance i set it to 200 so that um, you can be like that you can also choose an x line type which is the um the 2d attributes we have and a soffit you can add a soffit to your, your roof in this case i'm not going to do that and then we have a beams um section under beams we're going to say create a beam so you can go for a color type beam and then i'm i normally use the projection from zero i avoid this one because that I, I think it doesn't work for my for my um for my liking so i'll just say zero and then this will be under maybe let's say 5.8 5.8 depending on the height we want so it's subject to change if you want so i'll use the same dimensions for the material for i mean for the timber size then pair lines you can have an option to uh key in but i, I want it to be here so you can switch it off completely same dimensions as well are important even for and then the trimmers you can have trimmers within or between your rafters and then you have a rich uh, department where you can uh, make sure this where you can toggle or uncheck the hip uh, valley rafters like so and then lastly is the the um, layers but these are control are controlled globally so you don't have to go this route once you change one it will change for all of these guys so in this case here yeah. one thing that you cannot access from this window is the classification system if it could have been easier for us to do that if it was um placed here so uh the if angles is rectangular because this the edges of the roof are uh, exposed so yes you have to have a clean cut and uh, wait up until the end of the video i will show you how to create a stylish a clean cut for the rafter tails so just watch the video and then you can also change the material globally here like i said so in this case it's a pine hit okay it takes a bit of time and then it will place this automatically for you so let's see this on 3d let's key in our graphic override to be created for roof there we go that's what um it created this so we also have a the wall plate very created by that i think what we need to do is to change uh the material let's override the material select it and then by default it will be grouped um which is a good thing it will be grouped so you can just pick one item or one component and then open its settings under model parameters let's um i don't know why is this is to be we can go under roof maker settings and then define it here instead of changing instead of overruling we can say material and surfaces let's go for wood 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 which one i think timber for roof then hit okay yes that's basically what we have okay that's the easiest way of doing it um and then you can uh, go back to the then you can go back to the the floor plan view and to add extra but because we have different types of tools here for example let's select that or but let's suspend groups and then we can select the two um rafters what we need to do here is to create a tie beam or a color beam for this so i'm gonna go with this one which is a tie beam and then let's make sure the dimensions are consistent and let's set the height to 3.1 i would want it to be also the the ceiling of joist that's where the ceiling will be installed and it should be around the edges of the the wall plate so it's going to be 3.1 then i can place it there so cut a section 
let's move this section here you can see it on on flop and which is this one so if you open this section you can right click and, and open the current settings there we go let's change this to that okay so here we are so that's the the type beam. you see it cuts um the cuts are automatically done as you can see which is perfect i think that's a great thing to have so in 3d you will see it's there yes and then you can do what you can multiply across all the other elements that are similar so yes this is the automated way of doing it but there is another efficient way um, i know automation is efficient but in terms of um, the results it's also um, um, subject subjective sorry to say so let's select the roof and then drag a copy by Control shift d in your keyboard and then click on the one first bit point to move it to the side okay so um we're going to use a different approach this approach will enable us to detail further and be in control on what we want to do in terms of the result you see if you see here um there's a lot of inconsistency of spacing blah blah blah, blah the mighting and all the like so we need to have control of that kind of situation so what i would do i would use a multiple rafters tool first let's click on it it will say please select one of the roof or one roof to place this element one roof needs to be selected when it says one roof it means let me just hit okay it means this um this sides because this roof is remember we created it using multiple planes one plane is recognized as a roof so in this case we have different types of multiple planes we have these ones that are facing the upward then we have those these ones that are facing on the left side and then we have the right side as well so i need to select the one that i want to place this multiple trusses on it in this case i'll go with the side first it will give me the rafter settings um, as you can see so the thickness will be thickness will be 80 let's let's just go for 80 yes. 80 and then this 160 i think let's just stick to this uh measurements and then um we have the placement of multiple rafters options we have uh, options to distance fixed uh, gap to the end and then distance fixed gap to the start it will depend on what situation you're in, in this case i'm going to go with the the gap with the end and then the distance between the rafters will be 900 so in terms of the if angles i would want to cut it uh rectangular let me cut it rectangular okay and then i'll make sure the layer and then even though these are controlled globally but it's fine so and then we hit okay we now as you can see your cursor is now on a pencil on a or an edit mode or a pen uh, mode so we need to uh, define the length of where we are placing this um, rafter out this multiple rafters i'll start with this point to that corner it automatically plays as you can see you, you see the difference here we see the consistency of distance the distribution of the rafters are evenly unlike on the side the one for automated um, roof wizard so this one is quite mm, cleaner than the one we see the side and then in a situation whereby we want to also place it to the other sides let's activate the tool again and then hit ok we now select this roof you see this roof is from here to this point or i can or i can break this into three pieces i can have this roof and then this one and then here depending on what i want so let me just show you what i mean so if i select uh, this and then hit ok i'll pick this point to there it will place it automatically so the most key part here is to align these members because they're going to be ultimately become a one truss that has multiple items on it like struts uh, all those kind of things so that it's important in a situation whereby it's one like this i'll just um, manually 
edit that like that and then move this back like so yeah then we go again wait this time we go with this one we start by this point to there remember we can you see now we have an issue here let me just undo also we can do this we can hit ok and then select it there we go if we want to take it to fill in up to here we can say from this point we go diagonally like that to this point it will fill them but it won't be aligned the way we want so to fix this let's undo to fix that um go back again to the multiple uh, tool let's select that to fix this instead of using the gap at the end we're going to use the gap on the get from the start hit okay and then do this let's go this way it's almost it's almost i don't know why it's not it's almost there it's almost there okay i know what i can do as well to make sure this can work well what i'll do let me draw a guideline first so i'll go top there and then let's create a guideline so i'm going to use um let me use this line as a reference we'll just draw it like that oh what happened it went terrible. sorry let's do it again create a guideline I'm gonna go this way yeah now we have this guideline so let's click on the tool and then hit ok make sure you click on the roof this time around let's start with the gap at the end okay because we have a guideline so I'm going to start this from here to there perfect you see now it's accurately um, that's the control that I want instead of just using the automated it will create a lot of problems to address as you can see we have uh, different types of uh, distances or gaps between the members so now i can finish even this side we need to fill in this gap as well so in this case we're going to go this way let me just do that and then i can select uh, this roof and then i'm gonna start somewhere here to here okay and then little little things like this i'll just get rid manually like that and then let's finish everything now do this side and then uh, from there to there okay go this side click on the roof i'll place it from there to this point and then uh, the other side as well from this point to that point these ones are straightforward because they don't need other members to be aligned with so oh sorry you see here we need to say let's undo and then redo it again so instead of specifying from this point to this point we need to go diagonally from here to there so that it can be placed like that i think same applies to the side i'll start from this point to diagonally there okay can you tell the difference between these two this one is um neatly done all the elements are practically supposed to be in that shape so i know this might have killed a lot of time for you but also this we didn't have much of a time to assemble that so let's check on 3d and uh, f5 and oh we need to assign our uh, yes you get so what we have what we are missing here is the the hip beams the hip beams and valley beams so to do that let's go back and then we can use the roof wizard uh, tool so if we say roof wizard and then we're gonna we don't need the the rafter we don't need the beams we need the pair lines 
we don't need the cream or the uh, the trimmers and then we also want to have the hip rafters and valves these are the ones that want to please so make sure that the sizes are consistent it's supposed to be 80 to 160 yeah then hit okay so if we check on a 3d they are now placed as you can see they are now placed i don't know are they something weird it needs to go up a bit because this it's sitting on negative uh 175 let's see you yeah that's the problem so our suspend group all this should sit on zero same applies to oh sorry what i write that let me say undo and then redo it again like i said this should be sitting on zero right and then all the all these guys has to be i'm just gonna select them like that set it to zero yes now you have a clean joints between your elements okay oh these ones are left i don't know why for every reason because these are what i think that's the best way of doing this let me just undo okay i'll undo the best way to solve that is only change let's say this is i'm gonna copy this height and then i paste it to this yeah nicely done okay and then um we have a uh, Okay, this one has to be zero as well. Let's suspend that. We'll paste this out. What happened to my boy? This guy is supposed to be somewhere here. I don't know what happened. Let's take it down there. Okay. <clears throat> That's the reach uh trust. Oh. We have another one okay this i'll do it on a section let me bring the section over here right click and open with the current settings this is the guy switch this switch off to a different graphic over right let's move it to the other elements i'm gonna right click because I don't see the, I don't have a view for the top members, so I can just right click and go to layers and then hide the layer. Yes, so that I can manually now position this accordingly like that. Perfect. Yeah, I think um, that that was it about uh, placing using a creative. Uh, what you call the multiple um, rafters uh, tool and then we need to now take this further into another step because uh, it's not it's an incomplete um, roof system as you can see it doesn't have the other members of, of the truss so all these things all these rafters have to create trusses so that's the main reason why we are here i'm gonna go back to the floor plane so I'm, I'm going to start by placing the tie beam first to everything or to all necessary areas. So what I'll do, I don't know, can I place uh, multiple, multiple beams? For example, if I select this, I can just say uh, create a beam and then set it to 3.1, which is fine. This is supposed to be 180 and then the height is going to be 160. If you hit OK, so we can confirm this on a section how it's been placed okay obviously it's here it looks perfect it's sitting on the wall plate line so what if now we want to create for all this trust i don't know is it
possible for us to do it once. I'm just trying it out. Let's just see. If I say create a, tri uh, a tie beam, so if I set it to 3.1, and then the dimensions of the tie beam are fine like that, and then hit OK. Let's check on 3D. Wow, it created all these ones. That's the thing that I wasn't sure about. But now I have confidence that I can now select all the remaining parts. All these remain. Oh, yeah. To create a color beam, you have to have two um, rafters. As you can see, I'm selecting two rafters each row. So you cannot create. I'm not sure you can create in one. Um, in one raft, we would have to try it out. I think for sure we're gonna try it out. Yeah, we're gonna try it out. Okay, we can do the same to the sides because they are. And then, where is type beam? Let's set it to three point one. Let's check. Result. Oh, some didn't create. Some didn't create like these ones. I get. I know why because they are not a full trust. That is why they are not. Um, I guess why is yes. because it's not a complete a complete trust. As you can see here, that is why it's not uh, giving us the tie beam for this. So. Let's see, the best option is to now um, run a double gate so for the already placed uh, tie beam. So let's select the tie beam and right click. There's move, we want to drag multiple copies option. So this would give us an option to just copy like that, just to try to speed up. Yes. Yeah, and then there is this side as well. And then you. Then you. Make sure you group them once you're done. Because it's important to have have these elements in groupings. Okay, let's check on 3D. They are now all placed, but you need to adjust um, some of these tie beams manually because uh, in areas where like here where the truss is not complete or it's not full we have a um, series of them here I can see one two three four these ones so what I would do I can do it in a floor plan again because I can clearly see them because these are uh, it's the one two three and four okay these ones so what I'll do, I'll select, oh, make sure the suspend group is active so that it's, or oh, just to ungroup. Then select this guy. So what I want is to open its settings because these are objects, remember? So if I, if I click on the subtype view, we have this sort of maker library. I remember this, like I said, it's an object. This is the typing object that we're dealing with. So what I'm trying to do here is um, under the geometry uh, parameters i want the other side to be 90 degrees because it's not um it's not connecting with the other rafter so i would say 90 then he took it i hope it's this side but it changed let me see yes i did the wrong side so i can say open this is supposed to be 90 and then this one is the one for 80 yes that's what I wanted, as you can see. So only on this side, it will be my third for connection with the rafter, because this side we don't have a rafter. So it's gonna join up with the with the other um, vertical members. So before we can continue further um, by doing other things, uh, we have a valley rafter here. I think there are two the other ones in this the other side so what you need to do here is to select let's go back to the floor plan view to select this value this two value and then 
we can try to because they are on an angle we can try to place like i said i don't know it's possible to place a tie beam on a single raft so it says in order to place this element two rafters has to be selected that's why that is the problem but it doesn't have that much of i can copy these ones the one that i've edited before and then just rotate a copy i can just rotate that way and then move it to the place or to the position here then rotate it to a line yes so if you look at this the way they are starting right on the overhang of the of the building so i'll i will do the same move it straight to this point i think no it's not the right position it's gonna move it from here to there let's see on the 3d yes it's going to be something like that and we can uh move it back we can stretch it back so that it can be right equivalent to the length of the top member so i'm going to select the roof and right click to hide the layer for the roof okay so that i can deal with these members directly so i can select that and click on the the midpoint on the hot mid hotspot instead of the outside this will give me an option to move the node to stretch like that but if you select on this one at the top it gives you option to miter or cut this at an angle so on the other side on the outside it will give you the option to fatten or increase the width or the thickness of your 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 member so i would pick the mid one so that i can stretch it all the way to the length of the the length of the what you call the valley so what we are doing here we are basically creating a valley truss uh, guys so let me just say i think i need to fix also the angle here we can do it manually like that for the cut okay as you can see right so what we need to do is to adjust now these members that are, are protruding to end there so this will be now the option or the stopper for for these members make sure you select the right point it will be somewhere here same applies to this one yes it can be joined by nail or by any form of joint again be precise for example let's say instead of having like that uh yes have it that way so that it can be mitered as well let's do the same to this one and that one what's going on with this one this needs to be back as well now this needs to be on a might i can cut this one like that it doesn't deserve a cut i don't think it's it's suitable for the cut what do you think should you leave it straight i think this one because uh we can move it right so here okay so to cut you're going to use now a different approach to cut or trim these um tie beams so i'm going to use subtraction uh or boolean operation using um connection what you call solid element connection so i'll right click just on the space and then connect to bring solid element operation in this window by default the selected element will be selected as a target i need to get the operator which is this um member the top member and edit so the operation will be subtraction with upward extrusion so that it can trim as you can see the side and then moving to these ones I can do them all once 
like that and then pick them as a target this is going to be an operator we're going to change the operation to just a subtraction because we don't have uh, anything to worry there and then hit on execute you see now they are connected perfectly so that's basically now the the frame for the hip or the valley raft or the valley truss as you can see all right and then what's left to complete our truss our valley truss is the is the vertical members which you normally call them struts it will depend on whatever terminology some call them webs um i prefer call them struts whatever the language so let me just close the solid element operation for now because we're going to use it again more going forward so what i want to do here is to go to objects under design tool policy Op open the object settings i want library for roof maker library so i'm going to scroll down i'm looking for the post this post i'm going to use the same measurements that i've used for main of my roof uh, structure this is going to be the 80 and then 160 okay like we said make sure everything is under roof structural frames so that it can be excluded from this ruling for our graphic style and then it's better to do this in 3d so we need to place this on the joint so i will say i mean on the floor plan sorry i'll go back here and then uh, let's place it on this joint and we can place it at the end there somewhere here we need to move it here yeah let's rotate it control e control e in your keyboard and uh oh just use this rotation on the pet palette like that so i'm gonna do the same to this one and rotate it align it with the the member like that so let's check on the 3d so i'm gonna stretch it to be just find a perfect view for your moving it's going to be here yes oh okay <laughs> didn't reach i'm going to just push it there yes remember we need to trim it or to my tight using solid element operation now select both of them then right click to connect solid element operation and then uh, this will be the operator i'm gonna use upward extrusion because i'm trimming the top part of the this members so and then execute so that's basically what i wanted so i can select this complete truss and then have it a five to isolate it just to examine the result so far i think i need to uh, make sure the offset is it's accurate like that you can also group because it's just a truss it's a one truss right you can say show in 3d again so now you know this is just one truss okay that's basically the, the whole exercise so in this case where we have same um, value i'm going to delete that and mirror a copy to the other side i'll control shift m in our keyboard and then use the center of this as a mirroring access line like that so it will be placed on both sides like that that's a complete valley truss as you can see right okay let's move on to the main trusses this one we just started okay i'm going to do the same thing let's pick parameters of uh, the vertical member okay and then go back let's close off the solid element operation go back to the plane view it will depend on what type of truss you want to create but let me just start with the the different types of trusses um you can have so just place it here and then rotate it to align with the, with the both 
um, two rafters like that and uh, this will act like as a kim post of this truss i think let me just oh, we can just use these top ends because i'm gonna i'm going to what you call i'm going to trim the top at the end of the day so we need to also the distance between these two i don't know why it's like that let's check settings and see it's supposed to be 80 yes yeah like this and then from the base it has to be aligned let me just do the same by selecting all of them and isolate them and then we need to make sure this is that here we're supposed to have a, a a mitre okay yeah and then we can take this right click and then bring solid element operation it, it's going to act as a target so that this tool becomes an operator we are going to use upward extrusion just to trim it off like that you see now that's a complete truss there are different types of trusses if you want to have the the angled struts it's also um possible let's go back to the to the floor plan view let me get rid of this let's remove this one there let's let's go back to the object settings and uh, you would see um we can uh, yeah we have the struts we can use the struts that are angled at uh, whatever angle you want so it will depend on what you want so let's say let's place it this way then control e and rotate it to align it with the with the rafter like that then check on 3d Oh, sorry right click and then show all in 3d i think this is best we do it in a section let's open that section okay and again i would move it to here to this point this guy is not accurately this all right and then this side i'm going to pick the middle midpoint i mean the hot spot sorry and uh place it there let me see if i click here what's gonna happen over that side because we need to change this angle to be that one let's see this angle or this one if you move on we don't have those options mm -hmm. it's all about 90 zero okay now i see now i see no i see base strut oh yeah this is a base strut What can we do? I wanted just to utilize um, this because, but it doesn't make sense to have it because all the angles are. Let me put it this way. Oh, mirror, mirror it. I don't think it's okay. Now I'm, I'm thinking the efficient way of doing this. Efficient way of doing this. Okay, maybe let's try change to something different after a base strut base strut is vertical and then so on all right let's see if we can modify the angle we cannot modify the angle all right if we cannot modify the angle
I think we may just now use uh, Let me see this. Let me see on this one. This we cannot rotate. Oh, yeah. I'm trying to see if well, that's rotation. Okay, I'm um, have to decide going with one. Um, uh, method uh, let's say let's see here do we have an option to place pair lines or struts we don't have uh, which is uh, no we don't have we don't have so we are restricted to only this method let's say I don't know why it's not even under Classification supposed to be under roof, roof structural frame. Okay, go back to the section. What I'll do, I'll just move it here because we are set with the. We're set with the. I think no, this thing is right, guys. I've been struggling with some simple things. So what I need to do is to stretch. Oh my God to stretch this oh, but okay stretch is here what's going on yeah stretch here i'll stretch it to there and then mirror a copy for this to the other side that's how it's supposed to be this i know why they are this way and then i can uh, stretch the height to the top there Okay, maybe I can change also the width instead of 160. I'll go for 115 because it looks huge or 80 by 80, something like that, right? And then maybe, yes, that's how you, you, you do trusses. And then I'll select these two guys, right click connect and then bring solid element operation this will be the target so i'm going to use the top part as an operator but i'm going to use the upward extrusion then extrude so this is how it will be like so check on the 3d you get yes that's how your truss will be like you can adjust the size of uh, the cut something like that so that you can see this yeah for stability and rigidity of the truss you need to have this um distance okay let's uh group i hit ctrl g and then what i'll do let me mirror up copy to the side and then we have a complete truss that we can also all right let me do this let me do that set them one by one and hit f5 i think we need to fix this this will be the operator and then here is the target to execute yes so we have a complete trust now as you can see you're gonna repeat the same method or approach to every every situation like that so hit and control g to group for this as trust one you can even go further and save this as an object so if you want to for quantifying purposes so I'll go back here and then because they are the similar or they are the same with the one two three to four okay so i would uh what should i do yes i would right click and then move drag multiple copies i'm just gonna superimpose them on top of these ones just like that and then uh, i can go 
to 3d and then show all I'm going to delete the single okay not this one it's going to be a challenge to delete those ones so I would select this yes and then and suspend let me say yes and delete those ones okay so I know I have the trust system for that okay um, delete this one because we control D to move a copy to there Let's see how it will be but this would won't work because uh, of that okay this would won't work because of that right so I'll try by all means repeat the same thing going forward right so let's pick another situation because I don't want to complete that it's already complete let's see other option we can um, save this. Uh, let's say let's say let's say here no, let's see and then the rest is going to be just a, a rafter and then a tie beam if I see things there similar place to here yeah. okay so one thing that I need to um, introduce you can see the difference like I said it's this looks much advanced and this is just um, a quick way of doing it but it will create a lot of problems like I said now if you want to create some supports between your or some bracing between your trusses what you do is uh, you go back here let me close the window for the solid element operation what I need to do is we have the uh, sorry the trimmer tool so I need to select two let me just say unsuspend I need to select two rafters and then hit on trimmer make sure it's the same um, dimensions and then I can choose where I want to place it and then I can do the same to this one uh, trimmer hit OK choose where I want to you can have a guideline you can create a guideline to guide you on placing this for example a guideline that will be what is this yeah, the guideline that will be like that and then uh, I'll have another guideline because I'm going to stagger them I'm going to have a guideline somewhere here yeah Maybe I can I can move these guidelines some the oh sorry what am I doing? Oh made a mistake. Let's redraw the guideline again. I think somewhere there. Yep. Yep, and then this will be I'll move this one to there. They have to be aligned. They have to be aligned. Move this to here. Right. And then we select this one and that one. Add a trimmer. I'll select this part. Right. Just like that. These are easy pickings, right? Oh, sorry, not a pie line. That's my mistake. I want a trimmer. Oh, what have I done? Okay, that trimmer. Yes. I'm going to do the same to this gentleman here. The trimmer. Yeah, something like that. You get the picture. So, yeah, as you can see, now I have. Uh, 
I have the braces between the trusses, but they are not in the same classification. Like I said, they has to be on the same classification. So if you go down to the classification system here, it's supposed to be a roof, a roof structure or frame. Okay, they will be now solid. Okay. I hope this makes sense guys um, uh, by the way this video it was a request from our community our whatsapp group we have a community group for our whatsapp where we share and um, uh, help each other in terms of the architect related issues um, uh, even if our products that thing we, we just it's a very interactive uh, group uh, if you want to join it make sure you check the number on the description and then send a code add or add group so that we can um info, uh, enroll you into our community into our community platform so it's very very uh, interactive and it's very beneficial for those who want to start in architect or if, if you are intimidate you want some skills that others have that you don't have so it's important to learn from each other and i'm always active in that group by answering all the the queries questions and everything so just go down in the description you would find a number there you just send that number a whatsapp saying add group so i'll definitely add you to the group so that you can take part in that so yeah okay let's move on um like i said uh we we need to move on to the other side because we we've now done the uh the bracing so let's go back and what what tools that we didn't cover we didn't cover the create and eaves create a color beam we covered that now we need to play some pair lines for this exercise there is um, a tool called or an object called multiple pair lines or you can just use uh, this one let's start with the multiple pair lines oh no let's just with the tool first so to create a pair line maybe we select uh, let's see uh, why is it create create if pair line create uh, pair line right to place this element one roof needs to be selected first one roof needs to be selected first so what I'll do I'll right click and bring uh, sorry right click and bring the roof for this let's select the roof and then uh, or you can just say create a pair line select the roof the pair line is going to be 80 by 80 or 30 by 38 just go for 40 by 40 yes mm. what happened where is my pair lines no it didn't place but i need to select this first let's do it again select that first then uh, create pair line. Please click on the of the components of selected multi roof to place this element. One single plane roof needs to be selected. Yes, the single plane is this, and then uh, we hit OK. Yes, let's hit OK. I'm not seeing the results. Oh. I'm seeing results. I don't know this is working. Let's say create a pair line. We select that and then we pick this point. Ah, oh, no. This I don't think it's efficient. So there is a tool or an object. If you click on the object tool and then open its settings, um, I think it should be under here, speciality 26. Okay, you can say. You can search for buttons. Oh, I can need to improve this search bar for for the library because it's the response. It's it's very slow. It's nagging. I don't like it at all. Not for my liking. So this is the um, object that I like to use for the pair lines or for blundering or so for whatever. For button so um, go through the proper settings and then make sure the dimensions 
uh, whatever what you want so let's go for 50 by 50 it's fine for the sake so the roof the roof pitch is 18 then hit ok you can just place like that and then let's rotate it 90 degrees oh it has to be like that right and then i'll move it to this corner and then i can use this point you see to define the angle for both sides like so now if i want to run it along the length of the roof i can use this point and then stretch it to the corner then if i want to move it to the top or to stretch it to the top i can use this part and then do the same as well so let's now define the angle by clicking that and then that I see, I see this much efficient than using the tool here one thing that i need to change is uh the floor plan display so i can use it here or let's go back to its settings so under the profile settings if i click here it says representation and materials then i don't want to show the it has to be the, the roof timber for roof mm, this is going to be empty and then hit okay yes so that i can see the underneath so you see here i need to correct it like that perfect that's basically it if you check on in 3d make sure it's well now it needs to be under the right classification go back here set it to roof structure roof structural frame then choose hit ok yes i think all needs to change to this material but uh, i can see the height is not the same i can change the height from or oh, maybe let's set it to zero let's see I'll open the section. I think it's the best view to adjust this so I can do it manually like that. And then drag to there. Yeah, it's coming there. So what I need to do is well, this side I just mirror a copy to the other side. Just control shift M and then use this line to make a mirror copy and use this point to move it back to the point i think the angle also needs to be adjusted something like that so even here even this point I think they're not matching accurately. This needs to be I just I can move this uh, somewhere here and then I can stretch this one through the right then this also can be moved here i just need for this is a perfect result guys so if you are really keen to produce high quality drawings you would pay attention to small details like this ones so we have an issue here and this needs to be uh, still having an issue to connect this the way i want but that's basically how you detail your your roof structure I don't know what I've missed, but I tried to cover everything in terms of uh, 
creating using different approaches and a combination of roof wizard and uh, the the roof uh, maker tools so thank you guys for tuning in in this long video but uh, i appreciate your i appreciate your your input to this channel so i, I was uh before what you call during the course of this video i was i promised you to show you how to do some rafter tails so let me just use uh this and then uh, okay the first thing i need to do let's change this line first into 90 degrees so i'll just go to the roof marker settings oh, sorry and then the cut here is going to be vertical right yes and then from here what we need to do is uh, change uh, or sketch so just open a section a section like that of which this is the size again draft a cut that i want here so it can be something like that i'd like to start with the rectangle a rectangle will give me options to sketch for example i'll add a point somewhere there and then maybe this i want to do it like that and then i'll add another point somewhere here and then maybe this convert it into an arc we move it somewhere there reduce the arc like so anything whatever you know those things that guys so yes and then what i'll do i would use a morph tool uh, activate the morph and then apply that morph here if you check on a 3d where is the morph hey, there it is i'm going to stretch it extrude it along the length of this guys oh i did it uh, it was supposed to be inverse so instead of having it like that what i can do let me just delete this move first go back but i need to mirror this mirror that no not mirror what i'm doing take this side sorry offset this edge to this side something like that is and then activate the move tool place it there check on 3d let's extrude it all right so um let's right click to bring um solid element operation from connect so by so doing um this will be the operator and then these guys will be uh, the target to be targeted at 20 of them and then i'm going to just use extract um subtraction then hit execute so as you can see that's my rafter tail so and then this can be kept always uh on a hidden layer because uh it's something that you don't want to see but it creates an effect to your elements like that so that's another way of uh, spicing it up so yeah thank you guys for tuning in um make sure you go down to the uh, description and download the material that i used for this far and make sure you comment comment to let us know what you think about this video and what do you suggest in terms of uh, moving on and doing other tutorials what are your struggles in relation to a kit let us know and then we'll try by omens our best to help you so like i said this is a request from one of our followers and in our community a, a platform where we share and dissect um, different issues about architect because it's a community that very interactive so it's you can check the number on the description there to request for adding you can whatsapp just saying add group so we we'll definitely know that you want to be added to our architect group so yeah we can contribute like offering us some questions to address thank you very much guys i'll see you in the next video bye bye mm -hmm.